Wow. Howdy, folks. It's Labor Day weekend. It's Labor Day. Guess who's working on Labor Day? Yeah. Uh, we're going to look at a machine today that's pretty cool. That it's, it's, it sort of increases the safety issues. Uh, lasers, the first thought problem with lasers is you, you can't look at it. you got to be careful with the eyesight. You should be wearing glasses, goggles, whatever. And a lot of lasers come with a guard and stuff like the one we did the other week from Creality. Uh, was said to be safe, but you still should, you know, have the glasses on. But also there's smoke and there's a certain amount of radiation admitted and stuff, you know, things like that. This is enclosed. So it's built into a machine that's a box. It's heavy, but it's a nice desktop model laser machine. And we are going to check out the features and check it all out here. So hang with me. Yeah. I'm not going to take too long with this. We're just going to get this box out of here so we can see the machine. So just give me a second here and we'll get this opened up. Mm. It's well packed. Okay. Okay, we got rid of the cardboard box and right inside the cardboard box was another box. We'll cut this open and see if we get this thing out of here. So I got the top of the box open and there's nice thick Wow, thick black foam wrapped around the machine to help protect it on its way, on its journey <laughs> to here. Okay, I'm gonna get all of this gone and let's get the machine on the bench so you and I, we can have a look at this bad boy. Yes. Don't try this at home. Uh, I put it over on its side so I can slide the machine out of the box because there's just, it's heavy. <laughs> so, let's get her out. Oh man. Wow, it's out of the box. Uh, well, we still got a little bit of work to do because there's some goodies in here to be assembled or at least be set up for a run. Comes with a really thick uh, product manual. So there's a lot of detail about this machine that I, I do like, you know, because it does offer a lot of information about uh, how to engrave. Got to get all this off now. Tape and whatever. Wow, we. So. Yeah. Wow. And uh, by the way, all this you're looking at, this is all metal. Yeah, this is, uh, that's probably why it's so heavy. I don't even know what the weight is. I'm still curious about that. I'll try to find out so I can let you guys in on that. Cause I think we're talking probably 40 pounds or something. I really don't know. It is a heavy, heavy machine. And obviously here's where all the goodies are. Wow, that is a thick, heavy piece of glass. They've got, or plexiglass, I guess, tinted, but it's really, you know, solid. And it's even got a fur line or seal on the inside here. I noticed there's a fan. I'm gonna get this off too so we can have a good look at the, uh, there's a di digital readout over here on this side. There seems to be some filtering and stuff going on here. So I think not only will it protect you, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to cut all these tie wraps. Okay, I cut the tie wraps and get this emptied and then I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now that I've got this fully unpacked, I wanted to talk about some of the features besides the heavy shield here at the front, but it also has the honeycomb aluminum insert, you know, insert work plate here. But underneath that is another pair of plates you can remove, and you have a rotary system down below, which again probably adds the part of the reason why this thing is heavy. The laser is five and 10 watt spot laser, so it's rated for both. We'll get into a little more of that maybe uh, a little bit later on. And also you'll notice there's a filter at the back with fans. It can be vented and it can be power fanned. So we'll just take a quick uh, run around the corner here. I got it on a turntable and also have touch screen, which is really nice. You have touch screen control. Over here you also have your power button, a uh, standby button to show it's running and you have a little fan right here again to pull air. There's your uh, printer cable. Also your power cable will plug in here because it comes with a power brick, I guess we'll call it. At the back, you have an interesting set of plates here. This can be removed and you can add a venting system here, which can be vented outside. Oh, that should be on zero right now, it's not. Also, like I said, you can add a vent system, which I'll sh I can show it comes with the venting system. Yes, so you can hook this up for venting. So you can vent the uh, smoke and stuff outside. So that's really cool. It comes with a beautiful finish. It's all metal construction. And like I said, it's, it's, it's a heavy piece of equipment and it's obviously a huge quality build. Look at the cable management they've got on this thing. It's chained here and also down below. 
So your two, you know, X and Y accesses are both cable controlled at all times. It's got some strange glue up in here, but uh, that's just part of, you know, it has uh, hard limits so it'll know when it goes to the home location of things. So that's a good thing too. This is all from a company called Two Trees. I really haven't said much. I want to thank Two Trees for sending this over because this, as soon as I heard a little bit more about the features of this thing, I said, man, I think we got to get this thing in here and take a look at it. I was uh, reluctant to take it on because I thought it was just another laser, but I said, you know what, this one offers some very different features. We need to take a look at it. So it's here today, yeah. Uh, two last things to talk about here, and that's the actual work area. Now the work area is about 300 by 200 uh, centimeter, millimeters, or, or 30 centimeter by 20 centimeter. So you can see your work area here. See so your, your wood or whatever it is your engraving is going to have to be within that flow. Also, there's a really super interesting little feature here too with the uh, laser. You have a little screw right here. You just turn it with a little plastic top and the laser goes up and down for adjustment. So you can really fine tune the focus point on the laser. Also, I missed it when I was turning it around here, but right there is the TF card slot. Okay. <laughs> I sort of skipped over that. Now we're going to get it off this uh, crazy thing and set it up and let's get it running so we can see what's going to happen here. Okay, for our first test, uh, we were using the TF card that they supplied with the machine. Apparently there is a, a free program on there you can use with your PC if you want to do uh, laser work. And the program, I do know the program they're, they're using. It's pretty good. I have a Mac and so I'm using uh, Lightburn. Lightburn, of course, is an aftermarket three, third party uh, software that runs lasers in general. And for a test, uh, this is what was on the TF card, so we're burning it, but it looks like uh, just some basic information about the Two Trees uh, machine here. Eh, the TS3, as we're called, that's the model number, by the way. It's, it's kind of hard to read the font here, too, which is kind of awkward, but it's the TS3. It's very loud when you close everything up it's a lot better but it's still i find for a laser it's it's typical of a laser you you know it's running you know because you can hear it <laughs> so we're going to jump off this and get to one of my fun projects here in a second i'm just letting this thing do its thing right now so here's the setup that i like because i have an apple computer so i'm using lightburn lightburn works on linux pc or Apple and it's a very powerful, very powerful program and it can even make you, you know, <clears throat> pull a hair out of your head sometimes. But, you know, we're talking about the machine. We really don't want to talk about the software situation. It, it, it's just, it's, it's a steep learning curve. If you can get Lightburn working for you, the laser machine is going to do some fantastic things too. I found these at a Dollar Tree today. Uh, yeah. For a buck and a quarter and so we're going to put man cave on here and i thought that'd be a cool little sign that you know could hang up for the uh, garage here <clears throat> Ugh, you know man cave but the uh thing with this is when you set this up uh this has got to be done so that you know the laser where it's going to be you know engraving and that's where things can get a little tricky with some of these different machines and this one here has a nice scale on it for work area, so you can kind of scale out the whole thing, or you can start right in this corner. Uh, let's get her fired up and just see. Let's see how we do. Uh, okay, I just believe this. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry about the noise. Let me close that up. Yeah, it's pretty noisy when it's up and running right now. The fans are really loud. So uh, I might cut and come back or something uh, to when we're running the laser or something, just so you don't have to listen to this with me. But there you go, just man cave, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and that's just a really quick, fast demonstration of how quick some engraving can do. But look, if you can see that, I'll see if you can focus really well on that. The the accuracy it's just it does a beautiful job and that is at i believe it was at 100 percent at that point but you know look at the terrific job it does so there's a lot of crafty things you can do with a laser but really what we're talking about today is we're reviewing the ts3 the new monster from uh, two trees which is a company that puts out lasers you know and they make some heavy ones <laughs> so we'll just stop light burn here and I guess while this is working, and while I'm standing here, I can't see or 
I, there's no, the laser isn't even around me right now. This is really pretty neat because the whole thing is a package. You just plug, plug and play kind of, well, within reason. Listen, the light burn has nothing to do with anybody's laser, really. It's, it's a third party software thing and it, it can be a little hard to work with. Uh, I've had a lot of learning curve mosquitoes. Mm. And I think the next thing we need to look at is the rotary function on this machine because, yeah, it comes with rotary, as I mentioned earlier, and I, I, want, got, I want you guys to see that too. Right now, we're burning another man cave in solid, again, just to show you guys, you know, the possibilities of what goes on with this and, you know, this particular machine. Uh, I went to the, the uh, craft area of, I guess it was Dollar Tree, and for like a dollar and a twenty-five, you can buy all these different little wooden plaques. You can throw them in something like this, and you can custom make whatever you want. You know, so we can do a lot. You know, this is a this is an interesting. You know, yeah, that's an interesting machine. And you go down to the beach and sell your uh, souvenirs, right? <laughs> but let's uh, as soon as we finish this little job, which won't be too long, I don't think, uh, we'll get over to the rotary side of this and take a look at the rotary. Should be interesting. Oh, before I forget, this is the uh, duct pipe that comes with the machine. It's uh, kind of like a slinky thing. It's pretty neat. And also, there's a steel plate here with an adopter for that fits this so that you can set this up off the back and you can duct and pump, actually pump the smoke outside someplace if you want. And we're in the garage, so it's not too bad in here, but there's a lot of places where this would probably come in really handy to help uh, take the smoke away. Yeah, and just to give you an idea of something different, <laughs> no, it's just that way. <laughs> just thought I'd throw something at you there because we're going to get back to this situation too. As to you know, let's talk about you know who this is for. So yeah, and let's get to the rotary like I promised. So we got to remove this plate. Underneath this is uh, a pair of plates that have to be removed, and that will expose the rotary into this thing. So we'll get to that here in a second. Okay, so I've removed the uh, honeycomb, I've removed the two plates, and now you can see here's this uh, rotary system. There's a switch at the back of the machine that'll have to be switched over to two, I believe it is, yeah, in order to run the rotary. What that does is shut off your X uh, movement this way and instead turns it back down here to the rotary, to the uh, stepper motor that's down below. To give you a uh, feel for the size of the rotary setup, I thought it would be best if I just get a can of spray paint or in this case some uh, rust, uh, just a regular like a rattle can type thing and put it in here. You have to have the course cap has to be off, but you can see this is the size. I wouldn't recommend laser, you know, running a laser on this would probably explode, so don't do this at home kids, you know. But uh, laser then can be brought over and then you can uh, fine tune the laser using your, they, have a, they give you this uh, scale. So you can set this up and you'd bring the laser down, of course, to this area here in order to do this. So then you could engrave, say, something round. The size of the thing that would be round could be, let's try, just, just for fun, I'll go get a big can and just see if a big can will fit in there. I think it will. Okay, don't try this at home. Again, this is a quart size uh, paint can and I just want to see, you know, again, this could sit on the rotary. The laser would be over here. The laser would have to come way, way up. I don't know if there's enough adjustment for that. I don't think there is. So you probably can't do anything the size of a paint can. I don't know why you'd want to anyways. But I mean, there's there's probably jobs that would come up, but I just wanted to see if this would work or not. No, nah. looks to me like that's the, yeah, there's the top of the laser. There's our scale. No, we can't get the, reach the focal point. So this would be too big, obviously. But you could do things that are round. And it does give you that feature. So it's a pretty cool machine, a very compact kind of thing. I'm going to put the plates back, uh, throw the honeycomb back in. And like I said, I think the other thing we need to do is probably test the wood cutting side of this. And then we need to talk about who this is for. Who is this? You know, who would need this machine? You ready? Are we recording? Good. Yeah, that's probably, oh man, yeah. That's going down through. I probably shouldn't have done that. I, Cut the speed and everything way down, and it looks to me like it's already gone through. So I need to stop that and uh, just call it off. That will shut the machine off, so we don't have you and I don't have to listen to it. 
and I'll just open her up and have a look. But I think she's, uh, yeah, I think she's pretty much, yeah, <coughs> yeah, that's 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 cut right through. <laughs> that wasn't any problem at all for that laser to cut that. Uh, that was set for six millimeter thickness, which is you know a little over, well, a little better than quarter inch thickness. But you can see it just took the hole and just knocked it right out of there. But again, that was just for demonstration. I'm not trying to do anything fancy here. Uh, one of the uh, fancier things you can make, obviously, would be something like this, where you do a you know an eagle. Uh, that's, that is pretty. That is a beautiful piece, and that's all cut out with a laser. I just think that's. I still think that's just absolutely amazing. That is gorgeous. Anyway, let's talk about who this machine is for. Wow, I've got to thank again Two Trees for sending this over to us, the TS3, to check this machine out and just see, you know, how it functions and how it works. I was very interested because of the enclosure idea, and you know, I really like, I like the setup. You know, it is a cool setup. But uh, let's talk about who this is for. And the first person that comes to mind, I guess, would be uh, apartment dwellers or condo people, someone that wants a hobby like this, but they don't have this, you know, a large amount of workshop space or something. But on the other hand, if you had a large workshop, but you only wanted a small area where you could, say, run a laser from, uh, it would still fit, you know. It's just, I'm thinking apartment dwellers specifically, but anyone that has any kind of space confinement or issues like that, or doesn't want a great big laser you know, laying around their shop, and also something that'll stay obviously pretty clean, pretty clear out of the way, you can use it when you want it. So it's, it has, a, a, I think, a pretty good looking market area for you know what it is. And being fully enclosed like this, plus the lid, plus the glasses, a lot of safety. So if you're running it in a, a room area somewhere and someone walks in, you're not blasting them right in the face with a laser. Obviously, you have this shield. This, they say, will protect, but, you know, they also have a shield on the front of the laser. They have this. Plus, you have the glasses, and it's contained. So, yeah, it's, it's you know, it's as safe as it can be, I think, for what it is. The TS3 seems to work really well. It's very accurate. Uh, I, that hole I cut was powerful. The body is metal so it's a really nice uh, rather expensive looking machine <laughs> and we'll get to a, a link for you I don't know what kind of price situation we're going to be looking at but we'll put a link up to where you can you know find these to order them because uh, I'm sure there are some people also maybe an RV or if you have a small space you know and you want to be doing something like this with a hobby also if you want to be making money uh, with a craft or something and you need the laser for the engraving side of it or even cutting the wood anything like that again this is going to you know fill that bill now what are they uh, that was sort of the pros i guess we could say and and that's you know who, you know who is this for the other thing was uh that I looked at was the negative or downside. Obviously, there's a certain amount of space containment that you're trading off with something like this, but you're still, you know, anything I've got here that I was engraving like today, all fit in the machine, so there wasn't any problem. Okay, yes, the uh, paint can didn't, <laughs> on the rotary didn't quite work, but that's a, that's too big. You know, it just is, you know, and it's, I don't think you'd be engraving a paint can anyway, so it shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> the Touchscreen, I'm not really happy with. I think it could have been better quality than it is. Uh, it's, it's functional, it's okay, uh, it's not great. Oh, there was one other feature on here that we didn't touch and I meant to mention it. Uh, it has Bluetooth or Wi-Fi and you can uh, set it up with your cell phone, but uh, I tried and I, I could not get it to work with the cell phone and I was like, I don't really need it to be working with a cell phone. Cell phones, you know, obviously very limited. I like the capacity of a you know a laser that you can run from a computer or a laptop, something like that. But this does have Wi-Fi, so you can hook to the Wi-Fi and say generate a job from somewhere else. So that was good. Now uh, the power supply is fine. I I like the brick idea. It's fine. You know, the cable they gave you for the uh, printer is long enough. It's a good quality cable. Not a problem either. The power switch was a little flaky. Uh, it's working right now, but it was sticky at first. Of course, everything was brand new, so it could be that. Uh, just I had a couple problems with shutting it off, and you know, right now it, it seems to be working fine. Uh, the probably the touchscreen was probably the only negative. Oh, and of course the the loud sound. 
but that's inherent with the fans and the systems, the cooling systems that are in here. They are loud. It's it's kind of like a you know no brainer. It's sort of like you need it, but yeah, it is loud. You know, it, it's a noisy machine. When you open this up, it's like whoa. <laughs> it sounds like quite a bit of uh, industrial work going on in there. Uh, the finish of the cabinet is beautiful. I'm surprised they used uh, metal in this day and age. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you would think this thing would have showed up with plastic. Uh, the rotary could have been a little bit wider. There's room down there where they could have made a, another, maybe another inch or two, and I don't know if that would have helped somebody out or not. They would have been like, yeah, you know, there's only so much with rotary, and then there's only uh, there's only a certain amount of room in the machine, and uh, only a certain amount of space for the laser to be doing its work. So it's like, well, you know, we're probably they've done the best they can with that, I believe. The Overall build, obviously, they've, they've put a lot of time, money, and quality into the build. So, you know, they're pretty serious about what they're doing. And Two Trees have been around for a while. They have made, they have made some, they do make some other products. The uh, only other negative I don't like is on the back here is the switch. I think this uh, selector switch should have been up the front here for some reason. I don't know why they located it on the back here because you know it's just something that's out of sight like that and you sort of almost forget to think about it. in fact I'm not sure whether I'm on rotary or back on the X axis right now I believe it is and so there's uh, this should have been up here where you could select from rotary to nothing to your X uh, movement the ductwork for setting up for the uh, exhaust system that's great they include a set of tools so again awesome you know the uh, basically uh, I think they have a really great product here and it's just a matter of you know who wants it who doesn't want it if I was going to say have a laser in an office environment something like that this would be the kind of thing you'd want to have in fact this would be a must you know especially around anything where there's any other people so again and again if you have kids you might want something like this as opposed to the other ones where they're open air and they can hurt the eyeballs with the kids just like running in the room or something and saying, you know, what's daddy up to? And like, whoa, you know. So there's a lot of different area here uh, for, for where this could fit into a consumer uh, market, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I, I think that if you spend that kind of coin, you get something like this, you're going to feel like you bought a quality build because it is and I like the fact that there's no assembly required virtually you just unpack it plug it in and you know you're good to go you don't have to sit there and you know we'll go through uh, manuals trying to find certain screws to fit certain pieces or something mm -mm. the adjustment on the laser is uh, almost uh, needs to have an award uh, to whoever came up with this because you can sit there and turn this little screw at the top and raise or lower you know the laser and you can set it to exact height and focal length that you want, making it just that much more accurate than some of the other ones where you're fidgeting with little, you know, uh, thumb screws and stuff, trying to lock the laser into the right position. So that's a cool thing. We're going to come back to this at some point in the near future because we've got a lot of other stuff to cover besides lasers. And uh, we've got a draw coming up Thursday, I believe. So in the meantime, guys, that was the review on the two trees. Uh, TS3 laser engraver cutter rotary tool yeah over and out <laughs>